Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our live broadcast. My name is Apostle Joseph Helen, and I'm coming to you live from Nairobi, Kenya. I'm going to teach you on the orphan spirit. There is something that orphans go through that I want to teach you about. So my title for this broadcast is The Pains of the Orphan and Their Cures. The Pains of the Orphans and Their Cures. Who is an orphan? Now, today is Wednesday, and on Wednesdays I deal with family, marriage, relationships. Everything is with family. If you notice, in uh, most of my posts, I tend to focus on family a great deal because the Lord called me to restore family, to heal families, to get the husband to love the wife and the wife to submit to the husband and the children to be raised in godliness because the Bible says God is looking for a He's looking for a godly seed within the family. The devil is looking for the seed of the serpent within the family. It's important for you to know that you can give birth to a wicked child. You can give birth to somebody who messes up the generations that are to come forever. You can give birth to somebody that the devil will use mightily to mess up the purposes of God. So you need to have a husband who follows the ways of God and a wife who follows the ways of God. So that the seed that you produce becomes a godly seed. So it's my mandate, my calling, and my duty to teach you on family. So being a Wednesday and being a family, married and relationship day, I want to teach you on the, the orphan spirit. The orphan spirit affects marriages. The orphan spirit breaks marriages. The orphan spirit makes people broke. And where people are not, they are driven. So they are heartless. You see, it's called a dog-eat-dog -dog attitude. Aggressiveness that messes up with love and the union and the happiness that's supposed to operate within the family, just for the sake of profit, for example. Okay, Wars all over the world are caused by the orphan spirit. The kind of pains that most people go through in their families are caused by this spirit. So the Hebrew word for orphan is yathom. Y-A-T-H-O-M. Yathom. And what does it mean? It means to be lonely. Loneliness is a sign of an orphan spirit. There are certain people that can feel lonely within a relationship. They are married, but they still feel lonely. They have children, but they still feel lonely. They are within a community, but they still feel lonely. That feeling of loneliness, or that thing that makes you want to isolate yourself for people, is a yathom, or orphan spirit. And remember what Proverbs says, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1. It says that the one who isolates themselves does not listen to sound advice. They seek selfish ends. A person who isolates themselves will seek selfish ends. The things they do are smack of selfishness, and they are motivated by selfishness. They think of themselves, and they don't want to think about someone else. That's why they isolate themselves from people. Remember, you're created to belong to a society. That's why God did not create you and drop you in some island somewhere. You're created to belong to a society. The society could be messed up, but it's still a society. You're better off in a messed up society than none at all. So when you isolate yourself from people because they hurt you, or you isolate yourself from people because they let you down, not knowing that you also hurt people and let people down, that is called the orphan spirit or the yathom spirit. And the Bible says when you do that, you do not listen to sound advice. And you only go around seeking selfish ends. The things you do are selfish. Okay? Have you ever seen people who are self-centered? They are full of themselves. They only think of themselves. They don't care that they are hurting people. They don't care that they have a responsibility to look after people. They only think about themselves. This is what builds people up to narcissism. A narcissistic person cannot relate properly because they are always right and everyone else is wrong. And all attention is focused on them. There's no moment they can praise you, uphold you, be there for you. So this is what we're trying to break. To give you an example of how family ought to live, husband and wife should be loving each other. They should be close together. Do you know that? It's very strange that there's people out there who keep telling me off. They keep saying, why are you so close to your, to your wife? You're weak. They, they, <laughs> they call it weakness, being loving. <laughs> oh my goodness. The Bible says in the, in the last days, uh, some people will call evil good and good evil. Since when was loving a woman a weakness? That's strength. 
It takes grace. It takes anointing to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, it takes God's grace to smile genuinely. Yeah? People are too depressed in this world. So when you see us dancing to music and laughing, that's normal. That's normal to us. That's how we are. And we want to teach you that as well. When you see our children laughing and giggling and they're also excited, they have children who are free. And if you ask them, they'll tell you exactly that. Not only are they free, they play a lot. Not only do they play a lot, they're extremely intelligent. Okay? They know scriptures. They know a lot of things. They even teach me some things. You get that? So, when we present it the biblical way, people think we are the ones who are wrong. So what do you mean? Why are you so playful that being playful is, is for children? <laughs> oh my goodness. How will you ever raise a kid? How will you ever raise a child if you don't know their ways? Ladies and gentlemen, I've taught from kindergarten all the way to primary school, to high school, to university. Yeah, you know, I've taught all the way. So when I'm dealing with university students, I know what to do. When I'm dealing with kindergarten, I know what to do. When I'm dealing with my wife or any other lady, there is a way, there's wisdom for dealing with women. Okay, there's also wisdom for dealing with men. And when a woman is in the presence of her husband, she doesn't want him serious. She wants him playful. Happy-go-lucky. She wants to giggle. She wants to laugh. She loves humor. Not that seriousness that you're seated there as if you're in your office. There are some people who walk around in their offices. You, you're like a hermit crab. You got into an office and decided the office is your jacket. And that's what you wear even in your house. So that your children are scared of you when you walk in they're scared. When you're talking to your wife, she's scared of you. That is the orphan spirit. And I want to deliver you from it. So... The word orphan is yathom in Hebrew, and it means to be lonely. A person who is alone, they always make, they, they make decisions that are so crazy because there's no one to guide them or to mentor them. And that's what makes them become conceited. Now, I'm not here to water down the pain an orphan goes through. That's the reason why my title is The Pains of the Orphan and Their Cures. I want to heal it. So if you are lonely, that's a sign of being an orphan because most people always think that an orphan is somebody who doesn't have parents. That's one definition. The other definition is when you're lonely. That's what your thumb means, a lonely person. Yeah? Your thumb also, or orphan, also means to be bereft of a father. If you're bereaved or you're bereft of a father, you become an orphan. It's not your doing it's not your fault, but it affects you and it affects you negatively because it makes you lonely and it makes you um, vulnerable to attack because your father is supposed to protect you. Your father is supposed to help you, feed you. Your father is supposed to buy certain things for you, guide you in life, mentor you. Your mentor should really be your father. But when your father dies, and that's usually not a fault of yours, it's not anyone's fault that your father died, you become an orphan. So you start thinking that it's you against a wide and wild world. It's you against a horrible world. So you try your level best to cope. And usually you'll cope having isolated yourself from this cruel world. And the moment you isolate yourself, you begin to seek selfish ends. And when you isolate yourself, you found advice. You don't want to listen to anybody. You listen to me. Oh, you're treating me that way because my father died. You're treating me that way because I don't have any form of help. I don't have any backing or a group of people that can protect me. So you end up becoming antisocial and you end up becoming messed up emotionally. I want to bring you healing in the name of Jesus. The Greek word for orphan is orphanos. Okay? And it also means to be bereft of a father. It means really the same thing. It means to be comfortless, to be bereft of a father, to be bereft of a guide or a guardian. So a person who is comfortless it's a person who goes through difficult times and they just have to go through it. There's no one to comfort them. There's no one to listen to them. There's no one to tell them it's going to be okay. Maybe you lost your job. You don't have a job anymore. You don't have a source of income. And there's no one to pat you on the back telling you it's all right. Life is like that. You will get another job. In the meantime, I'm, I'll be here for you. When you go through the vicissitudes of life and the difficulties of life without comfort, without encouragement. You become hardened. And remember, Jesus said 
in Matthew 19. He said that it's because of the hardness of hearts that people divorce. People don't divorce because somebody made a mistake. People don't divorce because somebody cheated. People don't divorce because people don't see eye to eye. No, you divorce because of the hardness of heart. Of course, there are certain cases where people divorce because of violence. But where did the violence come from? Hardness of heart. If somebody's heart is hard, that means they're comfortless. They were never comforted as a child. So they became hard. You know, cauterized. Their emotions became hardened. They no longer have empathy and sympathy. They don't have soft skills. In teamwork, they want to be seen as the top guy. They can't let someone else rise. They can't allow people to clap for someone else or to appreciate or applaud someone else. They want all attention. Because they first isolated themselves, worked extremely hard to prove themselves. They rose up in tremendous talent and skills. And everybody thought this is the one to lead us. And in the process, they mistreat people. All dictators have the orphan spirit. Dictators and people like that, narcissists, are usually unusually talented. Now, all talents and gifts, the Bible says, all good and perfect gifts come from the Father of light, with whom there is no shadow of turning, in James 1 verse 17. But this gift are not supposed to be used to subjugate people, to ostracize them, to disenfranchise them. This gift is supposed to enable us help people, lift them up, empower them, not scare them. Now, personally, the orphan spirit will scare you. In fact, they'll ask you why you are a failure. Why are you a failure? You should be successful like me. Why don't you have money? They'll start telling you, when I was your age, when I was 24 years old, I was already a millionaire. What's wrong with you? You're 35 and you don't seem to have any money. That's an orphan spirit talking. People succeed at different times of life. I've told you many times, especially on Mondays when I teach on wisdom for finances, I've taught you many times that people like Colonel Sanders succeeded when they are 65 years old. You see, there are people who became astronomic success in their 80s. In fact, Colonel Sanders really began to see proper revenue from Kentucky Fried Chicken in his 80s. In fact, he got saved at 80, 80 something. Yeah, that's when he got to know the Lord as Savior. You see, there, I can give you so many examples of people who succeeded later in life. So you don't have to be a success at 16 just because somebody became a sensational musician at 16 and became a multimillionaire at 16. Just because Zuckerberg became a millionaire early in life doesn't mean that that's the blueprint for everybody. That's not the standard. That's the standard for Zuckerberg. And we appreciate him for what he's done because as a result of his genius i'm able to minister to you on facebook right now we do appreciate people when they do great things for us but there are those who succeed later in life so blooming late is still blooming if you bloom at 16 fine if you bloom at 25 fine if you bloom at 35 fine if you bloom at 44 fine if you bloom at 55 oh it's all right okay do you know you guys know oreo don't you such a nice biscuit crunchy biscuit the lady who started, the lady who came up with that thing, the lady who started the company, that Oreo company, became successful at 55. Yeah? She became successful at what age? 55. Yeah? And then, of course, she started a cookie company, and then her partners took her to court, and she had to start all over again. At 55, that's when she got her break. Kate Cookie House, yeah, that's the one, Kate Cookie House, which was later bought, and that it was bought now, it produces Oreos and some of these nice biscuits that a lot of people love all over the world, but she succeeded at 55. So an orphan spirit will cause a person who succeeded early because of God's elective grace. There is what we call election, grace by election. God uh, causes you to be a success to pioneer and to teach others. God always will bring you somebody, one person, maybe in a family or in a country or in a village or wherever, there'll always be someone who's brilliant, more brilliant than other people, not necessarily because of their education, they just are brilliant. 
You'll always find in your village, there's always a rich person. The reason God makes that one person so successful is for the benefit of the rest of the people. That's the reason why God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says he went around doing good in Acts 10 verse 38. Because God was with him. He went healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers, comforting people, declaring that the kingdom of God had come. One person. But he left 12 people whom he had impacted with that message and empowered to perpetuate the message. So God makes us great to make other people great. So you'll not find that everybody's great and everybody's rich in any society. They'll always be the richest person. In every country, there's only one president. In my country, we're almost uh, probably over 60 million. But according to the statistics of, of, of the Bureau of Standards, Bureau of Statistics, they, they say we're about 40-something million, maybe. But I think we're much more than that. Yeah? I think probably in the latest census, they will maybe find that we're 60 or more million. But out of the 60 million, only one can be president. Did you know that billionaires, dollar billionaires in the world, are just slightly over 1,000 in the entire world? In the entire world. The world of 7 billion plus. So God makes those people great. The Elon Musk's, you know, the Jeff Bezos, the guys like that, the Mark Zuckerberg's. The uh, Richard Branson's, the Donald Trumps of the day, the Ted Turner's of the day, Bloomberg's of the day, yeah, the uh, Damgotis of the day, Strima Sijiwa, the many other people in different nations of the world who are billionaires. They are not more than, they, they, they don't reach 2,000 in the world. Why is that? So that they can do certain things for the rest of the billions. So God gives you grace for others. But if you have the orphan spirit, you'll go criticizing everybody. Look at you useless. Look at you failure. Why can't you be successful? Why are you not married? I got married when I was 21. If somebody's 40 and they're not yet married, it's okay to marry at 50. Yeah? So the orphan spirit always wants people to follow a certain standard that's not necessarily biblical. So they make their preference a standard and that makes them prejudiced. The Bible is the standard. And people like Sarah at 75, Sarah had not even got a child. But she was beautiful at 75. People like Esther got married at 75. 75 years. You see. So you can succeed as a five-year-old child. But other people succeed when they are in their 80s. And it's okay. There is a time and a season for every purpose. So the orphan... It's a comfortless person. That means it's difficult for them to relate with the Holy Spirit, a comforter. It also makes it hard for them to operate in partnership. They find it difficult partnering with people. They have to be at the top. If they find you talented, they may want to fight you. Because their sense of insecurity is very high. They feel insecure. Like Hitler, that's an orphan spirit. He was so insecure, he went around eliminating people. Do you remember Shaka Zulu from South Africa? He went, he even killed his own child because he was insecure. He thought his own child would overthrow him one day. So he killed his own child. He was so insecure and he was an actual orphan, by the way. He killed anyone that appeared to be a threat to him. He never felt great seeing anyone thrive and flourish around him. That's called the orphan spirit. But God has called us to see you flourish to see you succeed in life, to see you make it. In fact, the Bible says our children shall be greater than us. So we want to see you greater than us, doing greater things than we've done. When a person has been delivered from the Spirit, they clap for anyone who is great. And if somebody does better than them, they immediately become a student of that person instead of fighting them. Okay? Glory to God. Are you listening, you wonderful people? The orphan spirit messes up relationships. Because an orphan means a person who is comfortless. A person without comfort. That's an orphan. And I want to help you to get rid of this spirit once and for all. Okay? Of course, it's going to be a process. Yeah? The orphan spirit messes up marriages and relationships. It needs to be comfortless. To be bereft of a teacher. 
If you're ignorant, that's a sign of an orphan in spirit. You've not been taught the right ways to do things. This is why I teach you on marriage and relationships, so that you don't have the orphan spirit. Then you get into a relationship and sabotage it. You see, your desire to be married does not necessarily mean you have the competence to be a spouse. It doesn't mean you have the skill to be a spouse. The fact that you desire to be loved and to love does not mean you have the skill to love and the skill to receive love. You see, being loved is one thing. Receiving that love is another. And if you are a person who has isolated themselves, you are a loner. The moment somebody comes into your life, you'll chase them away by your bad conduct. You see, because you like being alone. And being alone is not a personality type. It is an orphan spirit. Loneliness is, a, is not a good thing. That's why the Bible says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. The Bible says, I will not leave you as an orphan. The word comfortless, orphanos. Comfortless in the Bible is orphanos. The Greek word that means orphan. A person bereft of a father. A person bereft of comfort. A person who doesn't have a teacher. You get that? A person who doesn't have a guide or a guardian. So to the extent that you're not guided, and to the extent that you don't have a guardian, and to the extent that you're comfortless, to the extent that you don't have a teacher, and to the extent that you don't have a father, you have the orphan spirit. And that's the spirit that makes you scared and timid. You can't move on and take risks. You always want people to praise you. You're afraid when people criticize you, or you're afraid when people persecute you. You see, we preach this gospel. But people criticize us on a daily basis. Every single day, I think people slander me or criticize me probably hundreds of times on a daily basis. But I still come to you with the gospel of Jesus. People misunderstand me, but I just forgive them. Why? Because I've been delivered from the orphan spirit. I want you to be free from that spirit as well. So from these definitions, you can see that just mere loneliness makes somebody an orphan. So when a child cries without comfort, that spirit, the orphan spirit, gets into them because a child who cries and nobody's out to help them becomes vulnerable to demonic attack. Okay? I have cast out demons for many people who got demons when they were five years old. Some got demons in the mother's womb. The mother was traumatized. And because of that trauma, the child became vulnerable and the demon entered them. And that demon started messing their lives up. Okay? So when you're in a tough situation and you get no comfort, you become affected by the orphan spirit, okay? So those who aren't guided or taught in the ways of the Lord also become orphans. So notice here that if you don't have a mentor, if you don't have a teacher, you don't have a guide, if you don't have somebody to help you, to comfort you, to show you the way, you end up with an orphan spirit. Uh, do you realize that most self-taught people have that spirit? They rise to heights. A person can teach themselves, but they end up with the bad habits. People who are self-taught, end up with bad habits, and they like hardship. If you are taught by a self-taught person, they'll make that lesson difficult because they're used to hardship. But if you are trained by someone else, they'll show you the easiest ways to do things, the shortest ways to achieve things. That's why education is expensive, because by the time you're sitting before a lecturer who is an expert in their field, they'll make things easy for you. You see, I can type messages like this. I typed this last night and posted it last night for you. But you may read it and not understand it. But when I begin to explain from the very notes I posted last night, it starts making sense. Because now you have a guide. You have a teacher. I'm delivering you from the orphan spirit. Okay? There is comfort now coming your way. So people who are self-taught tend to suffer this problem. There's nothing wrong with being self-taught. But even in the process, reach out to be guided. Reach out, especially to ministers of the gospel and entrepreneurs who can help you and married people. You want to get married, please make friends with a married person whose marriage works so they can teach you the right thing. There are some people who are married, but their marriages don't work because they're based on tribal traditions which subjugate women and put women down and scare children. You don't want to learn from such a person. Learn from somebody who follows the word of God whose marriage works, and whose children fear God. They are raised in the ways of the Lord. You can learn a lot of things from such a person. And I'm not here to purport that such people are perfect. No. But you can see somebody going somewhere. In life, we are all maturing, growing from one level to another. So a person's imperfection should not be the reason you stop learning from them. Okay? As long as there are things in their lives 
that are beneficial to you, don't pay attention to their imperfections or their mistakes or where they get things wrong. In fact, it's because they make mistakes that they make money. Do you realize that those who are perfectionists are never rich? Perfectionists are never rich. But those who acknowledge that you can make mistakes over and over again become entrepreneurs. And when they become entrepreneurs, they build up more people because they learn patience. So when you make a mistake, they'll be patient with you. Are you getting me? When you're taking long to learn something, they'll suffer long with you. So the orphan spirit is eradicated when you start letting people teach you. But of course you can't be taught by people who don't have the grace to do so. I've noticed sometimes on Facebook, somebody thinks they can teach me in an area of my strength. That's foolishness. That's what's called presumption. Don't presume to know what you don't know. The Bible says don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. So the advice you want to give me is not going to help me because you're not my teacher. You're not my comforter. You're not my guide. You're not my mentor. I have people who teach me. It doesn't mean that I can't learn from a child. I learn from my children all the time. But you see, I need to have a relationship with you before you teach me anything. All right? So let's get those boundaries well defined. Because you can't just come to my Facebook page and then you see a post and you think you can teach me. That's called presumption. David said, keep back your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be upright and innocent from great transgressions. That's what David said. Presumption is a horrible thing. It's also a sign of an orphan spirit. You think you can advise everybody. You can teach everybody. I saw some very foolish person put on Facebook something that's crazy. They said, in our country, uh, the elections just came to an end and the presidential elect was, was uh, announced a few days ago. And I saw somebody put it on Facebook. What advice would you give the presidential elect? What rubbish? What advice can you give him? Advise your own self. Okay. Come on. There are certain things you cannot do because you are not competent to do them. Huh? You see, that's why the president has an advisory board. People who are qualified to give advice to the head of state. Not just anyone. I see a lot of fools trying to advise people much greater than them. What advice would you give them? If you're poor and you want to advise me on finances, the only thing I can learn from you is how to be poor like you. This is why on Mondays I teach you on wisdom for finances to get you out of poverty. I can advise you on how to be rich. Okay? But a poor person cannot advise me on how to be rich. All right? It's like a single person trying to teach me how to love my wife. <laughs> That's presumption. Even if you have the, 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 the anointing and the grace, there are certain things you can't teach me as a single person. So the orphan spirit is a spirit that makes you think you know everything. Instead of humbling yourself and learning from those who are greater than you. The Bible says in the presence of greatness, let your words be few. Sit there and learn. Interact with those who are greater than you. Say thank you. You see, an orphan never says thank you. I see, for example, I'm teaching you now. Do you know what is courteous? Is to say thank you for this wonderful message. One will sit there and start trying to advise me. I'm going to go through your comments. Yeah? And that is, if you joke around on my comment section, you'll be banned and blocked straight away. I won't even see the message. Yeah? My wife and my son are watching to see who is being a fool and an idiot. They'll remove you really fast. Okay? So that you don't spoil for the rest of us who are so happy. People are learning. But you'll always find one person who acts like an evil spirit. One or two. Everybody's so happy clapping their hands and they're enjoying what God is teaching. Then they come with some irrelevant statement just to make people unhappy. Now, not, that's not possible. Yeah? You'll be removed quickly. And, and banned and then blocked so you'll never access these precious things. The Bible says we should give precious things to dogs and pigs. That's found in Matthew 7 verse 6. That they will trample those precious things under their feet and turn around to tear you down. So there are people the Bible calls dogs and pigs. Yeah? You get it? Those are people who don't want to be freed from the orphan spirit. All right? Orphan spirit is also responsible for most addictions and character flaws that people grapple with. So now, do you see how the prophetic ministry now answers to this need? 
I'm coming to you as a person in the prophetic ministry. Apostles, an apostle operates in all offices. So I can operate as a prophet, as a pastor, as a teacher, as an evangelist, okay? And also as an apostle. But one of the uh, benefits of the prophetic ministry is comfort, okay? The Bible says prophecy is for edification, for comfort, okay? It is for encouragement, for edification, and for comfort. Three ministries. So the prophetic can deliver you from the orphan spirit. Okay? You see, once a person becomes has become an orphan, that means they're lonely. They don't have a guide. They don't have a teacher. They are not mentored. They're mostly self-taught. And probably they don't have parents, biological parents. You see, you can have parents and still be an orphan. You can have parents and you still isolate yourself. You're not well taught. You're not well trained and things like that. You're not guided. You're not mentored. You will still be an orphan. Okay? You don't have comfort. Maybe your parents are not loving. So they're not bringing you comfort. You still have the orphan spirit as a result. Yeah? But you can be delivered from this thing. So a person who becomes an orphan ends up with a spirit guide. And they usually think it's the Holy Spirit. So they say, the Lord told me. Oh, I dreamed a dream. The Lord told me this and that. And they like using prophecy to attack people. They'll tell you, oh, I dreamed that you're not really a good person. And they believe that spirit guide instead of believing the Holy Spirit. You see? Oh, the Lord told me that the pastor is not doing the right thing. So they cause people to turn against the pastor in the church. They always cause divisions, even in the family. They'll pull you to the side and tell you something very hurtful. And that's the end of your relationship. Or they'll tell you something about someone else. They love to gossip. Because they feel so small that they have to pull someone down for them to feel great. They tend to clap their hands if someone fails. Instead of feeling sorry for them to help them. Since they were not comforted, they relish when they see someone failing. It's a horrible thing. That's what I'm talking about. This is just part one. I have three sections. I'm going to deal with this every uh, for the next three Wednesdays. Two Wednesdays, to be precise. Yeah. So this spirit guide fills their heart from the, that moment. And then they develop a way of coping with their predicament, a way that is contrary to the word of God. So this spirit will subtly impart its nature upon this orphan, making it difficult for him to trust any form of authority, including God's authority. So you'll always think God is angry with you. Then you develop anger against God. Then you start saying, why didn't God protect me? But I thought God said this and that. Why has X, Y, Z happened? Yet God said A, B, C. They don't like authority. Or they have this unhealthy fear of authority. Or this rebellion against authority. Or they fight authority. Most rebels have the orphan spirit. You get that? So this spirit makes it difficult for people to enjoy a family. You cannot enjoy a family. If you're a wife with the orphan spirit, you'll be scared of your husband. And you see, love and fear don't go together. And if you're a husband with an orphan spirit, you will mistreat your wife, probably even abuse your wife and your children because of this spirit. And where you're not abusing your wife or children, you'll subject them to what we call the cold treatment, the silent treatment. You're quiet so nobody knows what you're thinking. Did we do something right? Did we do something wrong? You're just quiet. People can see in your, uh, when they look at your face, they can see that you are not happy, but you're not talking. You're not telling them why you're not happy. You see, so people are always guessing when they're around you. They're just guessing, what shall we do? They tiptoe around you. You see, so that nature, it's called a spirit guide, a demonic spirit that guides you in ways that are contrary to God. So the orphan spirit moves people to go out of the way so as to prove themselves, and that makes them unnecessarily competitive. They compete in a way that's negative. They're out to prove themselves. You see, a person under the influence of this spirit never settles in a loving relationship, but is ever driven to prove that they are good. Therefore, they deserve love and respect. You're going to love me, you're going to respect me. It makes a person needy, too needy. It also makes you too dependent on someone else. So you end up sucking up. Psychophancy is a sign of an orphan spirit where you suck up so much to be liked. It might make you overdress. It might make you overdo your makeup, for example. 
okay? This is not an attack on fashion. We, we love fashion. My wife and I love fashion. But there are people who overdo things. You find the eye shadow is too much. The lipstick is too much. Things are done in a way that's irritating rather than in a way that's beautiful. That's an orphan spirit. But you can be delivered. How? When you're taught. When you're comforted. When you allow people to teach you, you allow people to comfort you. You know, sometimes you may tell somebody, oh, I'm so sorry that you went through a hard time. No, 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 I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. That's an orphan spirit. You need to say thank you. Receive that comfort. It will heal your heart. Okay? Allow people to love you. I don't need your love. I don't need anybody. Oh, yes, you need people. Okay? So, a man, for example, might decide to go for the Miss World. To marry the Miss World, just to prove to everybody, I got the most beautiful woman on the face of the earth. That's an orphan spirit. Just marry because you love her. Don't marry to dwarf anyone or to compete against anybody. Don't marry to show people that yours is the most beautiful or as a woman, your husband is the most powerful or the richest or the greatest. That's not the reason we marry. We marry because we love each other. And then we take care of each other and build each other up. Even if you're the president of the United States or the president of the world or the UN Secretary General, you still need someone building you up. Even if you're the highest in the society, there are still, there are still higher things you can achieve if people want to help you. In fact, the higher you are, the more, the more advisors you need, the more counselors you need. But of course, competent counselors, not just anyone. Yeah? So some people marry not because of love. They marry to prove to people, I have the hottest chick in town. That's an orphan spirit, okay? There are some women who will wait for the most talented person. And then they don't marry them because they love them. They marry them to prove a point. There are people who work very hard and make lots of money, not because they want to help the society, not because they want to build and establish the kingdom of God, but because they want to prove themselves as the greatest. It's okay to be the greatest, but that should not be your motive. Your motive should be to help people, to establish God's kingdom, to love people. That's why we become rich, to help. God teaches us the word of God to help you, like I'm doing now. Not to prove myself that I'm so knowledgeable in these topics. All right? Are you getting it? You see, most sports people and artists are driven by this spirit. You find a sports person working so hard and they win medals. Now, if you win medals... Because that's your calling. And that's how you contribute to the society. That's fine. But there are certain people who feel horrible and empty. Even after they win the medal. They're never satisfied with winning. They feel horrible and empty. They think, oh, what else can I win? It's always about winning, 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 winning. There's no moment to say, I'm so grateful that I'm number one. And if you praise them, say, no, it's nothing. You know, I was trained by a lot of Brits. And I think a lot of Brits should be delivered from this spirit. Because they're so negative. Everything, most of them, they keep thinking of things as horrendous, revolting, nothing. What a shame. You know, statements like that. If you tell them, you're amazing, so it's nothing. Yeah? No, don't mention it. They think by talking that way, they're being humble. No, that's an orphan spirit. If somebody praises you, say, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate your words. It brings you comfort and heals you from the orphan spirit. Okay? If somebody tells you you're beautiful, say, oh, thank you. That's so kind of you. That's so sweet of you. They say, oh, it's nothing. Oh, it's nothing. If you're dressed well and somebody says, I love your suit, apostle. Don't say, oh, oh, I borrowed it from my brother. No, say, thank you. Do I look good in it? Thank you so much. You don't have to tell us where you borrowed it from. If you tell me, then I look good. I won't tell you, oh, I bought it from, you know, Mark and Spencer or something. Yeah? Oh, this is Versace. This is uh, Dolce or something. I don't have to tell you the brand unless you ask. If you ask what brand is that, what? Then I'll tell you. Yeah? So don't say, oh, it's nothing. I borrowed this from my sister. If somebody says, oh, you have a beautiful smile, tell them, thank you. Tell you, kind and sweet. We want more positive people on this world where so many people are depressed. We need people who praise other people. If you notice, whenever you, if you make a positive comment on my page, and I'm training people to be positive, that's why I call these critics. 
people who are not helpful. I call them idiots. But you notice I'll only say I love you. I'll only say thank you. I love you. Thank you very much. I'm sending my love to you. You see, it's positivity. That means we are not operating under this horrible orphan spirit. You get that? So a person that make all the money in the world, win, yeah? Like, for example, MJ, Michael Jackson, he was, he was the greatest pop star that ever lived during his time. But after that, he still felt empty because of how his father treated him. And he talked about it. His father was too hard on him. When your parents are too hard on you, demanding performance all the time, not comforting you, not being there for you, not letting you be a child, you grow up as an orphan. And you may become the greatest in the world, but still empty within. But when Jesus saves you, he fills you with the spirit of comfort and the spirit of adoption that enables you to say, Abba, Father. The spirit of adoption enables you to grow out of this state to a person who is mature and patient enough to relate to other people. So the feeling of worthlessness and emptiness is removed when the spirit of God fills you. Okay? Now, if you are an orphan, the Lord has given you his spirit. His spirit can fill you. If you read the book of Deuteronomy 16 verse 14, the Bible says, and you shall rejoice in your feast, you and your son and your daughter and your manservant and your maidservant and the Levite and the stranger and the orphan and the widow that are within your gates. We need to reach out to orphans. We mustn't reject them. They are orphans because they were rejected right from the start. But you need to embrace them. Even if they're irritating, even if they're difficult, even if they withdraw themselves sometimes. Sometimes they decide to just be quiet. They, they decide to stay quiet on you for weeks on end. Don't give up on them. Okay? That's what the Bible says here. We need to feed them. We need to take care of them. Yeah? Deuteronomy 14 verse 29 says, And the Levite, because he has no part, no inheritance with you, and the stranger, and the orphan, and the widow, which are within your gates, shall come, and shall eat and be satisfied, that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hand which you do. So when an orphan comes your way, embrace them. Listen, they will try you though, they'll test you. Because orphans tend to be addicted sometimes to things. Sometimes they are extreme. They are either too harsh, or they cry too much. They have extreme emotions. Or they have mood swings. Don't give up on them. Suffer long. Because if you succeed in comforting them, training them, and helping them, they usually become the most loving people on the face of the earth. Because they can appreciate people's pain. They've been through it. They've been rejected before. They've been without comfort before. So they are able to know when people are going through this thing. Okay? All right. We are blessed so that we can bless other people. If you're watching me and you don't know Jesus, your Lord and Savior, this is your moment to know him. Jesus is coming back again. And he's coming back for you and he's coming back for me. But he's only coming back to those who are saved. Those who believe in him. He loves you. He wants you to experience his love and his care. He's the only one that can deliver you from the orphan spirit by filling you with his Holy Spirit, who we call the comforter, the paracletos, your senior partner, the one that shows you the right things you ought to do. I want you to say this prayer after me so that you may get saved. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you're the son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and rose again for my justification. Today, I receive you as Lord and Savior. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I'm now saved. Glory to Jesus. If you prayed that prayer, now you're a child of God. Start feeding on the word of God. Depend on the Holy Spirit. Depend on the Holy Spirit. Depend on the Holy Spirit, okay? Depend on him. He will help you. He'll rescue your marriage. He'll rescue your family. He'll rescue your children. You've gone through difficulties in life. You can rise up again. You can rise again. It's possible. I know people who failed so many times. Thomas Edison failed over 1,000 times before he invented the light bulb. Yeah? Henry Ford, the one who created the most prosperous, most profitable motor company in the United States during his time, and helped with Second World War and many, many things. Do you know he was auctioned five times before he became the greatest in the United States? Don't worry about the difficulties. By the way, the more hardships you go through, the brighter your star. If you don't become bitter, and if you don't start criticizing, tearing people down, 
if you keep building people up and if you increase your network don't cut people off increase your network okay are you listening to me now please share this widely with your friends share so that others can be blessed i'm going to teach you again on the second on the second um, episode on this particular topic of the offering next wednesday I have three episodes and you need to listen to them so that you get delivered. And then listen to this message. Watch it over and over and over and over again. Let me see who you have online. My precious son, DeRoy, is online. I love you so much. Essentia Sister Fire says, nice suit, Apostle. Thank you. That's beautiful. I appreciate that. Thank you for appreciating my suit. Oh, you put a smile on my face. Thank you so much. Dicey Quinker says, I'm blessed. I love you so much, my dear. Judith, my precious one, says, good evening, watching and learning. God bless you, my dear. Love you so much. And happy birthday. It is her birthday week. On Sunday, we are cutting a nice, nice cake for you. Oh, no, you'll be the one cutting it. <laughs> All right? We're going to appreciate you until you drop. Okay? We're going to love you till you drop. Glory to God. Nelly David, my precious sister, says, I love you so very much. Essential Sister Fire says, I'm encouraged. Apple is a duo. Love you so very much, my dear. She says, I'm learning. And my precious wife says, the orphan is a person who is comfortless and can't relate with people or with the Holy Spirit. Keep teaching, my love. I thank God for you. Love you. Those are the words she's speaking to me. I feel so good. That's my wife who's spoken beautiful things into this heart of mine. I feel great. Wait until I'm done with this mission. I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you until you blush and blush and, and blush and blush again and again. Uh -huh. Who else do we have online? Dota who? Why Humbu saying amen. God bless my dear. Love you. Onyando Osmond saying, he says, listening to words of wisdom. I love you so very much. Jathan, he says, I'm watching. Topic to ponder on. Love you so very much. Ida, my friend. Oh my goodness. I'm so happy, so, so happy to see you. She says, listening. Love you so very much, my dear. Say hello to those wonderful children of yours your entire family anita anet is watching god bless you christine Rousseau says tuned apostle i love the look sir my all-time apostle wow you're so beautiful thank you i celebrate mom in a new chapter my coffee is ready tuned in oh you're so beautiful love you so much thank you so much for being so loving and caring to us david prince says powerful message we are blessed and edified love you love you too you see you guys are getting it now. You're loving and you're sharing love. That's how you get rid of the orphan spirit. Give. The Bible says more blessed to give than to receive. And most people think giving is just about money. No, give words of encouragement. Love people. Appreciate people. Praise people. We want a positive world. Negative confession is not going to help us. Be positive. Even if things are hard for you, put a smile on someone's face. Like you people put a smile on my face. Thank you so much. I love you. Now, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We are going to bring you brand new worship songs. Our music director, Jitin Chiguna, the birthday girl, will be here tomorrow together with our creative director and the rest of the team. And we shall be worshiping Jesus in spirit and in truth, okay? So make sure you tune in tomorrow. I love you. This is the Apostle of Love. I'm signing out right now. Till tomorrow, have a wonderful time. Bye-bye.